U.S. and China must find middle ground. Deputy Prime Minister Hing. DPM Hing's speech. Deputy Prime Minister Hing Sui Kiet, who is also the Coordinating Minister for Economic Policies and Finance Minister, was the keynote speaker at the Straits Times Global Outlook Forum yesterday. In his speech, he outlined his hopes for future US-China relations, Singapore and the rest of ASEAN. On US-China relations, DPM Hing stated that the world must be prepared for the strategic rivalry between the US and China to further deepen as there is now bipartisan support within the US to adopt a tougher stance towards China. This means that the incoming Biden administration will be unlikely to reverse Trump-era policies. However, he also asserted that the US and China must find common ground as both sides need to remain engaged to tackle global issues. Even during the Cold War, the US and the Soviet Union worked together to solve certain problems, such as by eradicating smallpox. Indeed, the present scenario need not be so different, as some willingness to uh, cooperate has been expressed by both China and the US. DPM Hing commented on the storming of the capital in the US as a sign of how divided the US has become, but expressed confidence that the US could weather the storm. He then mentioned that China will not only have to grapple with ongoing unrest in Hong Kong, but also have to deal with inequality between its rural and urban regions. Areas of Cooperation DPM Hing went on to highlight several areas for the US, China and other nations to cooperate in. Regarding public health, he urged nations to strengthen the collective response to future pandemics by supporting initiatives like COVAX, which ensures equitable vaccine access worldwide. When focusing on climate change, he pointed out that rising sea levels would affect island nations like Singapore disproportionately, making it important for us to address. Furthermore, global research into sustainable technologies could yield improved resource efficiency, boosting economic growth. He emphasized that digital governance needed to be improved as COVID-19 has accelerated the pace of digitalization. He cited the lack of digital standards, norms and safeguards, as well as the need to combat cyber risks as the reason for why international frameworks have to be established for the internet. He also stressed that all countries must undertake structural reforms to build competitive advantages so as to benefit from globalization while simultaneously ensuring that social policies are sustainable. On Singapore, DPM Hing explained that as Singapore is small and open, it will be adversely affected by external events much more than others. This, however, does not mean that Singapore should close itself up, as Singapore's economic success thus far has been completely dependent upon the value we bring to the world. Being small also has its advantages, as we can be more adaptable, flexible and innovative in tapping opportunities created by global cooperation. Examples of such opportunities include leveraging on our status as a global financial hub to establish Singapore as a regional high-quality carbon credit marketplace, nurturing startups like C and Grab, and adopting technologies like artificial intelligence and quantum computing. DPM Hing expects Singapore's economy to recover slowly in the second half of 2021, which will be helped by the worldwide adoption of COVID-19 vaccines by then. Singapore will aim to achieve equitable growth, attract new businesses, and help existing ones adapt to the new economy. The government will continue to invest in the local workforce, complementing it with foreign expertise. In addition, the state will also focus on taking care of the rapidly aging population and providing younger Singaporeans with access to job opportunities. DPM Hing believes that it is important for Singapore to reinforce national unity by pushing back against polarization seen elsewhere, as we will only be able to seize the opportunities presented to us when Singapore is strong at home. On ASEAN DPM Hing stated that Asia's share of global gro uh, gross domestic product GDP, will grow steadily and that Asia would recover faster from COVID-19 than the rest of the world. Asia will contribute 60% of global growth by 2030. The Asian century, DPM Hing emphasized, is however not inevitable due to uncertainties caused by US-China tensions. In ASEAN, the US protects regional stability by enforcing the rules-based international order, while China is the largest trading partner for most ASEAN members. In order to maintain ASEAN centrality and keep it in the driver's seat, all ASEAN nations must work together in an inclusive manner, act pragmatically, 
and avoid entangling ourselves in great power competition. DPM Hing also encouraged Singaporeans to hold more cultural exchanges with fellow ASEAN countries. Other experts. Other experts at the forum also chimed in, urging ASEAN to guard against protectionism and to tread a fine line between China and the US. They highlighted certain reasons for optimism, such as the next US President Biden, who would be more predictable and consistent than Trump, though they conceded that US-China conflicts over Taiwan and human rights allegations would still continue. They were pleased by the earlier-than-expected development of COVID-19 vaccines. They also observed that China has already started its economic recovery, providing stability in consumer demand for the region. The experts highlighted several reasons for concern. They warned that protectionism might become mainstream as nations attempt to protect their domestic industries at the expense of others. They cautioned that ASEAN might turn into the next battleground for the US and China. Hence, ASEAN must remain open and insist that all countries play by the rules. As of now, countries in ASEAN have benefited from the global uh, geopolitical rivalry, such as Vietnam, when sh manufacturing shifted from China, and Singapore, when the Chinese tech giant ByteDance, the developer of TikTok, expanded its operations here. If the situation deteriorates too much, however, ASEAN members may be forced to take a side, potentially pulling ASEAN apart. They also expressed concern towards China's worsening relationship with Australia, Japan, and other South China Sea claimants.